Hi, this is Brian with Mingo Smart Factory. In this video, I'm going to cover how to calculate OE in Excel. Uh, a bunch of people have asked for that based on looking at our OE calculator on the website, which is pretty easy. I'll send a link to that as well. Uh, so let's just start with a blank Excel sheet here, and we're going to calculate OE. So as a reminder, OEE is um, availability times performance times quality, or sometimes talked about as APQ. So let's first do the availability calculation. So the, the very first thing that you need to know is how much planned production time do you have? So we'll start out with this and it'll be very simple. We'll call it planned, all right, planned production time. We'll do all of the, these calculations in minutes. Okay, so let's say we have 120 minutes of planned production time or two hours, right? So now the question is, how much time did we actually run during that planned production time? So what we want to know is how much downtime did we have? First, let's start with uh, unplanned downtime, and then we'll talk about planned downtime later. So we have unplanned downtime of, let's say, 15 minutes, right? So our actual production time or operating time is 120 minutes minus 15, which is 105 minutes, okay? So now what we're going to do is divide our operating time by the planned production time, and that's gonna give us availability, right? So equals operating time divided by planned production time. And then we'll turn that into a percentage, right? 88%, it's pretty good. So, you know, we can obviously change these parameters around. So let's say we did a full eight hour shift and it was 480 minutes and we only had 15 minutes worth of downtime, 97% availability, okay? Now let's think about planned downtime, right? So we have our shift, our shift length and then we have planned production time. So let's roll this back. I'm gonna change this back to 120. I'm gonna add another column here. And we're gonna call this, what's the total amount of time that I have available to produce? So let's just say that's a shift. Let's say it's eight hours and that's 480 minutes, okay? So shift length, which is 480 minutes, right? So this is the total available time that I could be producing, right? Planned production time is our planned downtime taken from shift length, right? So we take shift length, we remove our planned production time, and then planned downtime, and then we come up with our planned production time. So here we're going to put in planned downtime. Okay, and let's say our planned downtime is, um, let's say we have a half an hour for lunch and we have two 15-minute breaks. So it's 16 minutes, 60 minutes worth of planned downtime. Now we can debate whether or not lunch and break should be planned or unplanned. I think there's reasons for both depending on uh, your particular situation. So now we're gonna calculate planned production time. So which is our shift length or our total available time that we have to produce, but in this case, it's an eight hour shift. We're gonna subtract our planned downtime and come up with 420 minutes of planned production time. So then our formula still works, right? So unplanned downtime is 15 minutes. So our operating time for the machine was 405 uh, minutes and we have an availability of 96. What's real interesting about this is planned downtime, and I have a whole other video on this, can hide inefficiencies in your processes. So let's say I had some tool changes that were planned, changeovers that were planned. I can change that to 120 minutes of planned downtime. My availability percentage is still the same. So something to think about when you're calculating OE. So now let's move on to performance. And I'm gonna just create another section down here to make it a little bit easier. Uh, so what performance is, is while we were running, how well were we running? Does that make sense? So were we producing at the right cycle time? Um, you boil this down to a, a very simple calculation, which is how many parts did I actually make during the time period and how many parts should I have made? So let's say, for example, our cycle time in parts per minute is two parts per minute, right? So we'll call this cycle time and PPM, parts per minute. So let's say we're going to create two parts per minute, okay? 
And we're gonna use our operating time up here to figure out how many parts we should have produced. So our target quantity is going to be two parts per minute times the operating time. So it's because we ran for 405 minutes, right? So we should make 810 parts. That's our target. Well, how many did we actually make? So our actual quantity, let's say was 796, okay? So our formula is very simply performance. I'm gonna put it over here so it comes down to availability, okay? Our formula is what we did produce, 796, divided by what we should have produced. And then we turn that into a percentage and we're pretty happy because we're running at 98% of our cycle time. Uh, what you also notice, though, is that this will fluctuate based on downtime. So the more downtime you have, it can if you made the same number of parts, it can increase your uh, performance. So, for example, let's say I had 30 minutes of downtime. Now I'm at 102% of my target. Or if we change it back to 15, now I'm at 98% of my target. Okay. So let's now calculate um, quality. So quality is, is really easy. Uh, good parts divided by total parts. So how many good parts did I make? We'll call this scrap, okay? So good parts is going to be um, our total actual quantity, 796, because in the performance cal calculation, it does not care whether it's scrap or it's a good part. So you're counting them all because you're you're making them, right? So our good parts is going to be actual quantity minus the scrap. So let's say we scrapped out five, right? And now we can calculate our um, quality percentage with those numbers. So we have good parts divided by total, 99%. So now how do we calculate OE? So it's availability times performance times quality. So OEE is this times this times quality. There's our number, 94%, it's not bad. So this is a pretty simplistic example. Uh, we can transform this into something a little bit more comprehensive so that you can do it line by line. Uh, and figure out um, how all of that is working. So we could we can do that really quickly. So let's say we have multiple production runs on a on a single piece of equipment across a shift. So let's say we have production runs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Um, and let's let's just choose some durations on these. So let's say this one went sixty minutes. This one went. Um, 115 minutes, this one went 30 minutes. This is a lot of production on a single machine. Maybe it's kind of a job shop in a in a day. 90 minutes, uh, and then here, let's see where we are because I want this to add up to 480. Okay, so 295. So our plan production time here is uh, 475 minutes. Let's just make this one 35. Uh, so it fills out our entire shift, right? Um, so our planned downtime, we can just put in some rando numbers here. So like this one is three, 15, maybe um, four, 25, three, nine. So, but these would be actual, right? So like um, how much planned downtime did you really expect to have during each one of these? Maybe maybe it's zero, and maybe this one is a 15-minute break. Um, this one is also zero. Uh, you know, this one's another 15-minute break. Here's a 30-minute break, and then zero, 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 right? So our total planned production time, um, or sorry, our total planned downtime would be the, the following. So we're just going to copy this over and I'll fill that out. So we have we have 60. So uh, unplanned downtime, let's just leave all these at zero for the moment. We can go in and fill them out later. Uh, we'll take this across as well here. Um, our cycle times, they can vary. So let's say on this one, it's two, let's say six, let's say one, let's say half a part, 
Um, this is all parts per minute, so you could transform them into different units of measure as well. Uh, let's do three, um, one, and two, and then we have the bottom. So we're not going to total these out because it wouldn't make sense to do that for for cycle times. Yeah, so we have our planned production time, which is the uh, time between the start and the stop of this particular job. So let's say this one lasted an hour. It could have started at 10, ended at 11. We didn't have any planned downtime here. So really what we're going to do is we are going to use planned downtime, so subtract that from planned production time. There's going to be a variable in between here that we're going to have. And then we have our unplanned downtime. So in, <clears throat> in this case, our operating time is going to be this planned production time minus planned downtime minus unplanned downtime to come up with operating time, right? And then our cycle time is two. Our target quantity is going to be operating time times our target cycle time, okay? Our actual good quantity, we can fill out. Um, good parts is going to be actual quantity minus scrap, right? So we'll throw zeros in here and just fill them down. Okay, same thing here. Okay, scrap parts is gonna be zero. All right. And then we'll calculate uh, AP and Q here in one second. Okay, so let's just do a test to see how this works. So if we have our shift length of 480 minutes, we could just do this in the top one, make sure that everything works correctly. We got planned downtime of 60 minutes. We have unplanned downtime of 15 minutes. Right, so our operating time is uh, 405 minutes. Right, our total quantity here is 810. See how this is all matching out. Our actual quantity, which I'm going to fill in, which is 796, is here. Here's our good parts, and let's say we scrap out five. Right, so <clears throat> now we're going to do our availability math, which is our uh, operating time divided by our planned production time. So in this case, it's going to be operating time divided by our planned production time, which was our shift length, minus our planned downtime, okay? Because we got to take out the planned downtime from, from our shift length if there was any, any part of this, right? So let's make this a little bit bigger, and then we'll turn this into a percentage, right? So 96%, so that matches. Now let's do performance. Remember, performance is actual quantity produced divided by our target quantity produced, also turned into a percentage. Okay. And then quality is good parts divided by actual parts. And then OE is A times P times. Q, and there we go. Spread these out, right? Turn these guys into percentages, and we're good to go. Okay, so all of that worked. It matches up to what we had before. So we can change this back, right? So we can go to 60. We can say that this was zero, and now we have our calculations, right? So um, let's say in this case, because it, it got a little wonky because we you know, put some large numbers in here for quantity, but... Let's say our, our actual quantity was uh, 88, because now our target quantity is 90. Here's our good parts. And then all of our OEE numbers are looking pretty good here, right? So let's fill down all of these formulas for us, okay? Uh, quantities don't matter, actual, I mean, they do matter, but um, they're formulas, okay? And let's fill this out, all right. We got a bunch of our... Uh, or divide by zero. So you can put an if statement in there to deal with the, the divide by zeros if you want. So if we go through and fill the rest of this out in terms of uh, our, our target quantities and stuff like that, we can do that. So let's do that. Now we're calculating the math. And now let's put in our actuals. So let's say we actually got 600 here. We ran it 100%. Don't know that that happens very often. Uh, let's say we scrapped out uh, six. So we're, we're scrapping out 1% there. On this one, let's say we did pretty bad, 15. And you can, you know, you can continue to fill this down. So 30, uh, 200, 50, 70. So what we can do is we can also highlight uh, the different things that you would enter. 
So for example, these are the fields that you would enter from a planned production perspective. So this could be the this would be the difference between the start time and the stop time of a specific job. Um, your planned downtime you would definitely enter. Unplanned downtime you would enter. Okay. The this is a calculated field. This is a data entry field. Might have done this the opposite way. Target quantity is calculated. Actual quantity is entered, and then our scrap is entered as well. So that's how you would calculate OEE across multiple uh, lines in a spreadsheet. It's pretty simplistic. We could make one that's a lot more comprehensive than this. Now the question becomes, this is OEE for individual production runs. So the question becomes, how do I calculate it for the entire machine for the entire day? Well, that's a really good question. So what you can do is, what you do do is you summarize, or sorry, you use all the different components of the OEE calculation to, to do the calculation. What you do not do, what you do not do, is take the average of the OEEs of each one of these production runs. There's two reasons why you're why that's the case. One is you end up with the average of averages problem, which you can take a look at on uh, Wikipedia. The other problem that you add you have is that every single one of these production runs has equal weight, meaning you know I had a I had a 60 minute run and I'm treating it the same as 100 minutes or 90 minutes, or I'm treating the 35 minute one the same as 100. And I could have had a horrible production run there that would drag down the average of, of the rest of them, or it could have been really good and it would bring it up unnecessarily. So the way that you do this is like the formulas are basically the same. They are the same. Like you're going to use this data across the board, but you're just summing up the different pieces, right? So I'm going to sum up um, my actual quantities. I'm summing up my total target quantities. I'm summing good parts, I'm summing scrap, and it's doing all of my calculations for me. So if you look at these, the math is the same, right? It's the same as what we looked at before. For example, in, in availability, we're looking at total pr planned production time, minus our planned downtime, et cetera, getting to our operating time. And then it gets us to uh, our availability percentage. And then, you know, on and on with performance, it's the same thing. We're looking at the total target quantity for the, the entire shift, which is adding up all of them together and then dividing the actual quantity by that. And then scrap is the exact same thing. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We will post it to our website so that you can download it along with this video. There'll also be a link here to be able to take a look at and download that as well. And we also have a really nice OEE calculator on the website that does all the math for you and then shows you the formulas in real time as you do it. So thanks. Oh, and one last thing, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. You don't have to do this manually. You can use Mingo Smart Factory to do this very quickly. You can implement it in a couple of days and get a lot of real time uh, OEE metrics and a lot of other good information that a smart factory system sh should give you. So check out the website, gomingo.io.